that there's a powerful topic there. And the topic is the betting. The betting. Praise the Lord. While I was seated there, the Lord said something very powerful to me. And I'm going to say it to you. That's going to be the first thing I'm going to say as we build by the Spirit of God. The betting. Now, what does it mean to bet? To bet is to bring forth. Are you with me? To bet is to what? Is to bring forth. To bet is to bring out. To bet is to what? Is to bring out. Please pay attention to me. You cannot bring forth if there is nothing inside. Are you with me? So there is something that God brings inside of you that he expects you to what? To bring out. So betting is simply you bringing out that which has been what? Brought into you. Are you with me? Betting is what? You bringing out that which has been brought into you by the Spirit of God. Everybody here is affected by this message. So you have to do yourself a favor by ensuring that you are not distracted. Because as you are seated here, there is something that God has worked into you. But betting is what works out what has been what worked into you. Betting is what defines fulfillment in life and destiny. So there will be no fulfillment until there is a what? A betting. The investment of God over your life will waste until there is a what? A betting. Are you with me? What God harvests in your life is what you have betted. So, until there is a betting, God cannot make profit over your life. What makes a man profitable at the bet is an urgent message for this season. I want to believe that the topic came by the Spirit. And we must ensure that we take advantage of it by, 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 by making sure that our eyes is focused. There is somebody here today that must bet something after this program. It will start with repentance and then leads to what? Betting. Before there is betting, there must be what we call conception. There must be what we call what? Yes. If I know what you have conceived, I can know and discern what you will bet. Because the same thing you conceive is what you are going to what? It's what you are going to bet. Are you getting what I'm saying? The potentials of God in you are the gift of God that is eating. Look at this. The world cannot access God's gift in a raw form. Are you there? Betting is you refining what is raw into a finished project. And until what is raw is refined, it cannot bless a generation. Are you with me? Are you with me? As wonderful as meat is, it is not useful in a raw state. That meat must be bettered. Are you there? Before it becomes presentable. In the process of betting, God will cook you. Cooking now means it will subject you to process that may not be palatable to your flesh. But if you stay through the process, you will what? Bet something. There are many people 
though they have the potentials in them, but they have not been able to what? To bet it. They know they have the gift, but yet they are not manifesting the gift. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at this. It is at the point of betting that God begins to make profit from your life. Are you with me? Are you with me? When I say betting now, I'm talking about you getting to that point where you can now begin to display those things that God has kept into you such that people can now be blessed because of your manifestation. The Bible says, for the earnest expectation of the creator <laughs> awaits the what? The manifestation of the sons of God. The word manifestation there means betting. Are you with me? The word manifestation there means what? Betting. So what, the gen what your generation is waiting for is your what? Is your betting. I have gifts is not enough. What are you doing with the gifts that you have? Are you with me? God has given this to me. It's not enough. Is God making profit from the gift that you have? We are going to go into the scriptures. But I need to say this to serve as a kind of foundation. Are you following me? Are you following me? There is no heaven for someone that dies as a debtor. Are you with me? Who is a debtor now? A debtor in this concept, in this context, is that person that knows that God has worked something into him, but has refused to work, to work out that which has been worked in. And because he is not fulfilled, he will miss the kingdom. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay, let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1. We are going to start this reading from verse 5. Praise the Lord. There was in the days of Herod, the, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth praise the Lord Zachariah was a priest am I right but when he wanted to marry he married from what the daughters of who of Aaron you will not know who to marry until you know who you are. Are you with me? The first question is not, Lord, who do I marry? It's a wrong question. The first question to ask is, Lord, who am I? Are you with me? Zachariah knew who he was. And that knowledge was guiding him to who to marry. Are you getting what I'm saying? Zacharias was a priest and because he was a priest, he married from one of the daughters of Aaron. The question is, who is Aaron? That's it. Aaron was a high priest in the time of Moses. So, priesthood to what? To priesthood. Many people marry wrong because they are asking the wrong questions. It is not first, who do I marry? It is first what? Who am I? You cannot even know the right friends to keep until you know who you are. Otherwise, you will see eagles hanging around chickens. 
Eagles hanging around turkeys. Do they blend? No. The reason you will surround yourself with friends who are not godly is because you have not discovered who you are. You are. Let's learn from Zacharias. Priest! They married from what? A priesthood family. You will see the result of the union now. Verse 6. And they were both what? Righteous. Yes. Before God. Yes. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. Yes. Blameless. They were both righteous because they look alike. If you choose to make friends with someone who does not look like what God wants to do in your life, you will walk out of purpose. Both of them were what? We are righteous. Before who? Before God. And the Bible says, they were walking in all the what? The commandments of God, yes? And the ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. What does it mean to walk in, in the commandments of God? And what does it mean to walk in the ordinances of God? They were walking in the ordinances of God blamelessly. Now, the commandments of God in this place are the general laws. Are you with me? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bow to another God. Are you getting what I'm saying? They kept those laws. Not only that, they also kept the ordinances. They were working in the ordinances of God blamelessly. Now, ordinances now has to do with the laws that is attached to their priestly office. There is a general law that they kept and there's another law that was particular to their office that they also what? They kept. Are you getting what I'm saying? One of the laws for the priest in those days is that a priest must not touch something that is dead. If a priest touch something that is dead, that priest becomes unclean. Because a priest is holy unto God. They kept those laws too. Many of you do not know that you are a priest. And because this knowledge has not yet been grounded in you, every day you keep touching what is what? Unclean. And you don't know that the more you touch, the more unclean you become. So we have a Christian. Who loves God, but is still married to darkness. There's a song they play when they are in a sad mood. There's another song they play when they are in a good mood. Are you there? Fluctuating. Fluctuating. It is hard to ascend, but it is easy to descend. Are you with me? It is hard to climb up, but it is easy to fall. So you can you can be in the spirit. You can you can press for for five hours to charge, and you can lose all those charges in two minutes. Are you with me? Many of us we are not careful. Even let me tell you something. If you are a child of God and you listen to songs you should not listen to, what are you doing? As a priest, you are touching what? Unclean things. And look at me. You become like what you touch. You become like what? What you touch. You keep touching the world. Keep touching the world. You will be worldly. 
if it is God you are touching, you are touching, you are touching, we will see godliness in the way you live your life. Are you with me? There may not be more than two. There may not be more than three. But there is somebody that God is after today. If God can get you today, and God can bring you to that point where you say, Lord, now I want to stop touching worldliness. I want to stop touching something that is unclean. I want to be consecrated unto you. Then God will make profit from this program. Let's continue. Verse 7. And they had no what? No child. Because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in age. Verse 8. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his what? Of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at this. Zachariah married right. Are you there? And yet, they were what? Buried. So, if you are married and you are here, listen to me carefully. That your marriage is facing crisis is not a sign that you have made the wrong choice. Are you with me? As long as there is Jesus in the boat, the presence of the storm will not be effective. Are you getting what I'm saying? They were barren, yet Zachariah was what? Carrying out his daily work responsibilities in the temple of the Lord. What can you learn from that? Your condition must not affect your commitment to the Lord. Are you with me? Your condition, yes, must not affect your commitment to the Lord. Zachariah and his wife were, they were barren and yet they were what? They were serving the Lord. This is why Look at this. Look at this. Let me say this by the Spirit of God. How many of you want to serve God for long? All right. Now look at this. Listen to me. Your motivation for service is what determines the length of that service. Are you with me? Your motivation for service is what defines the duration of that service. If you will serve God for long, your motivation for service must be your love for the Lord. Are you there? If your motivation for service is your own personal gain, you will serve for a while. But after some time, you will go back. So let's learn from Zechariah. His condition did not what affect his what his commitment tell somebody close to you don't let your condition affect your commitment for the law now let's go to verse 10 and the whole multitude of the people we are praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was what? Troubled, yes. And fear, what? Fell upon him. Fear did what? Fell upon him. 
Now look at what happened. Let me explain what happened to you. Pay attention so that I can bring you into understanding by the Spirit of God. In those days, the temple has three compartments. There is the outer court, there is the inner court, and there is the holy of holies. But the Bible told us here that the crowd gathered and they were praying. Are you there? Where were they? They were in the outer court. The inner court is for the priests. But the only of holies, only the high priest can go there. Because if you go into the only of holies and there is sin in you, God will kill you instantly. That was why Uzzah died. Because he touched the ark. If you study your Bible, you discover that the ark of God is usually placed in the holy of holies. Meaning that the ark of God itself represents that part of the temple, which is the holy of holies. So the man that touched has been touching sin. Uh, if you are used to touching sin, the day you touch the ark, judgment will touch you. Are you with me? He has been touching sin. Openly, he tried to help the ark, but he died. If your secret life is not equal to the life you are living in the open, the day you will be exposed is the day you will touch the ark. Uh, because that day, judgment will what? Touch you. Uh, you know, you can lock your door and uh, it's fine. The ark will be passing one day and you will touch it. That's the day you will get your reward. What? Openly. So, the people were in the outer court praying. Meanwhile, in the outer court, the jealousy of God is not as much as it is in the inner court and in the holy of holies. Sinners can stay in the outer court. Nothing will happen. Are you with me? Now, at this point, Zacharias had gone to the holy of holies. According to history, they told us that during those period, when the high priest goes into the holy of holies, there's this chain they used to tie to their leg. There's a way they do it. They will shake it. If the high priest moves it, they know it's still alive. Because even if the high priest touches sin and he goes there, he will die there. There is something about God that does not flow with sin. Are you there? It's so much that Jesus cried on the cross and said, My father, why have you what? Forsaken me. The sins of humanity were so heavy on Jesus that God looked away. So the attention of... Are you with me? Are you with me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So on this day, the people were praying in the outer court. Remember that Zechariah was barren. Are you with me? They were praying. Meanwhile, what happened is this. The people will be praying, sending their request to God. Oh God, the one that needs a job, the one that needs a wife or whatever, we pray, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. The duty of the priest, what the high priest does in the Holy of Holies is to intercede for the people. So the high priest comes to the Holy of Holies representing the people before God. Are you there? Are you there? The high priest is representing what? The people before who? Before God. So what the high priest will be doing is law. But this what your people are asking. Please grant them. He is not supposed to pray for himself in the Holy of Holies. If he prays for himself in the Holy of Holies, it is a violation 
to the rule of their priestly office. So while he's praying, saying, Lord, yes, please grant the request of your people, the Lord will now begin to come to him with, with revelations. There's a man in the outer court. This is his name. Tell him, I will do this, I will do that. He goes with something to note things. Are you there? So when he comes out to the people, the people are expectant. After giving them personal revelations, he will now pray for them. That is the, that is the culture. But on this day, now follow me carefully. On this day, you see, your faithfulness in service has a voice. There is something your faithfulness in service is saying to God that you are not even aware of. Are you there? Even if you are not talking, your faithfulness is what? Is talking. Zacharias was, you know, he was no longer praying for a town. Him and his wife had forgotten about it. Anyway, let's all be serving God. At least we are, we are blessing lives. That's okay. But this day, as he entered, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. He has not even started praying. Please follow me carefully. And when the angel of the Lord appeared to him, the angel told him, he said, Zacharias. Now, when, when the angel came, the Bible says, fear, does what? Fear did what? Fell on him. What does that mean? It therefore means that the presence of that angel that appeared to him cast what? Fear to him. He was not fearful. But the presence of that angel that appeared introduced fear into him. If you, if, you, if you encounter a spirit for the first time, you'll be fearful. Are you with me? And the reason the fear will come is because that spirit that you saw will bring it to you. It's a way of making you subject to them. Are you there? So when the angel of the Lord came, fear was cast on him. Because of time, I, want, I will just narrate it. So the angel now told him and said, your wife is going to what? Is going to give birth. Are you there? Let's, let's read it. Let's read it. Okay. And there, verse 11, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fell upon him. And fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Yes, fear not. Praise the Lord. When an angel tells you, Fear not, it's not the same thing as when Jesus says, Fear not. When an angel says, Fear not, that statement reduces the intensity of the fear he himself has thrown on you. Are you there? Because as the angel is ministering to you, he has to see the fear. Are you with me? But when Jesus says fear not, that statement removes fear from your equation. So there was a time Jesus was walking on the sea and the disciples saw him. The Bible said they thought it was a ghost. What did Jesus say? Fear not. Fear was removed. Are you with me? All right. Now look at verse 13. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is what? Is heard. And thy wife, Elizabeth, shall what? Bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have what? Joy and gladness. And many shall rejoice at his what? At his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And shall neither and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be what? Turned unto the, unto the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in spirit and power of Elias, to turn the heart of the father to the children, and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just, 
to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, verse 18, pay attention. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know? Shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife, yes, well stricken in him. Now, look at this. Why the angel was speaking to Zacharias? The angel gave him full details of his child. This is the assignment of this child. This is what this child is coming to do. After the angel finished, Zachariah now said, Okay, how do I know that what? That this thing will happen. Because me and my, child, me and my wife, we are what? We are whole. The word no there means, How do I believe? That me and my wife we have a child. The word no there means how do I have faith that me and my wife we still have a child? That was why the angel responded. If you continue, the angel said, Because you what believed not, you will be dumb. Are you there? When the child is born, then you will what? You begin to speak. Pay attention to me. Holy Spirit, help us. The Bible now says when he came out, you know the people were praying. And the Bible says it took longer time. Are you there? Something that is supposed to, for instance, something that is supposed to last for five hours, now lasted for ten hours. You know, he had made the people wait extra. Are you with me? So, they, they, they should be expecting much from him. Baba now came out. And then, faced the crowd. They said a lot of things. Baba was not talking. He wrote. Are you with me? Baba could not talk again. Who made him dumb? The angel of the Lord. Are you with me? One thing you must notice this. An angel... Whatever an angel sent from God is doing, is God that's doing that thing. Are you there? Whatever an angel that is sent from the Lord is doing, is God that is what? Doing that thing. So therefore means that God made Zacharias to become what? Dumb. Another thing you must notice this. Anything God does to you, it doesn't matter how it looks to you, you will profit from it. Even if you go dumb, there is something he wants to achieve from that dumbness. Can I show you something? Can I show you something? The people waited extra, but unfortunately, Zacharias did not come for it. He did not come with any word for the people. Are you there? Imagine he's not dumb, and people are now expecting. And Zachariah, Zachariah has now said, well, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. But you know, the Lord told me I'm going to give birth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then they said, yes. That's all. Amen. Sir, this thing is supposed to be five hours. <laughs> we waited for ten hours. So all that God said now is, <laughs> your own wife will give birth, Abby. They will stone him to death. And there is nothing he can say for them to believe that he did not pray for himself. They said, when you got there, you, you, you violated the rule. You were praying for yourself. So God wanted to save him. Hmm. You know, I made a statement. I said, anything God does to you, it doesn't matter how the world is seeing it. You will what? Profit from it. So how he escaped from being stoned to death that day was because he was done. Another thing you see from there is when he went back home, the Bible did not tell us that there was an issue between who? Zacharias and Elizabeth, his wife. Because your husband left speaking and he came home, he could not talk. Are you not supposed to cry out? It therefore means that when Zacharias got home, the wife spoke to him, he could not talk, and he wrote in the paper. Let's assume he said, I met with an, with an angel of the Lord and then it pleased the Lord to make me dumb until you give birth. And when 
Elizabeth read that in the paper, that settles what? The case. When you marry the right person, the voice of the Lord becomes potent in that union. There are some people, if you come to them with, this is what the Lord is saying, they will fight it. It takes women like Elizabeth to hear God. This is what God is doing. And not struggle with it. If you want to know if you are in the right friendship, if you are in the right relationship, bring the word of the Lord to that place. And watch out for the reaction. Anyone that constantly reacts against the word of the Lord is not a best option. Are you with me? Then, I cannot continue to read further because of time, because I want us to pray. If you study this place well, there were two things I want you to take note of. Zachariah's meeting with that angel is an encounter. Are you with me? If you read further, you will see that the same angel came to Mary and said, you will give birth, the name of your child will be Jesus. Are you with me? Another what? Encounter. The first thing that must happen for you to bet something tangible in God is an encounter with the Spirit of God. Are you there? If you miss encounter, there will be no betting. Do you know why? Because encounter is what brings conception. Are you with me? So the first thing is what? An encounter with the Lord. It's not this normal church thing that we do. Just come to church and dance and go. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, you now know God for yourself. God is real to you. How many of you here, somebody comes in and points gun at you, deny Jesus, how many of you will not deny him? If you deny him, it's not your fault. It's because he's not real to you. You can't deny a God that is real to you. Not the one your pastor is talking about. I'm talking about the one you know personally. Are you there? The one you are touching consistently. One thing you must also notice this. Conception comes by the word of the Lord. Conception comes by what? By the word of the Lord. Right. Can you receive this? Can you receive this? Can you receive this? Now watch me. The angel spoke to Zacharias and his wife, he was not there, conceived. Huh? What are you catching from there? A Zacharias received the word and the wife that was at home, what? Conceived. What are you catching from there? If God, if your disciple receives a word from the Lord and you are connected, you conceive. It will show in you. Are you, are you with me? It will show. Because Zacharias and his wife Elizabeth were one spiritually. He received the word who conceived Elizabeth. Hello, can I help you? The one that God has ordained for you to be your friend or maybe your marriage partner, one of the ways to check if they are truly your friend or your marriage partner is anytime God speaks to you, they should conceive. Mary received the word and what? She conceived. Conception 
becomes a reality when you receive the word. As you are listening to me now, there must be a what? A conception in you. If you receive the word. If you receive the word. Have you ever asked yourself this question? At what point did Mary got pregnant? Are you interested in knowing? Should I tell you? The moment the angel spoke the word, the, the baby was formed in her. That's it. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, so as you are listening to me now, if you are truly receiving from the Lord, there must be a formation. Is that formation that leads to transformation? Because you will bet what? Something. Harabananto siva rahadavai. Zinama navora vasande brehika babai. Embra fanatu jali brehida vananto sili brahati balanda silaba. Embra vananto shakabiri anda baria sabila banta bilagaba. Abere zuzia manota zili abrahas kubalante brehika babanta. Era vananto si abrahida va sembro kubabaligaba. Abaranda fiko si baravina kubaru hakabalante si kebrehida. Meru jadule varu zabirahada. Embra hazuzia manonte behiza. Era habananto si kabalabalada. Era bababaleko baruka banato shabrehida bababa. Lord, we trust you for a conception. Rahaus kabile rehiza nanto si brohoko balati kaba. Rabanda si ke brohoko babante rehiza. Marusha de la ba. Hare banato si kabalaba. Re kaba papa leko parus kabilanta. Re de iko kapa leko si la bariata. Merusha bilante brehira. Mere de bere de barada bire ke de brus kabalante. Iros kabilante brehira. Re de 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 baruda balade baruda man. Nanto reko palate varianda baba ba esh kabalate bira reko kapalate balaba rise to your feet and pray ra kopanento sila maro pane ya kopaliaba ieko te parada mane kopariaba baba re baba la bara baba baba ba this is the reason you are here this is the reason you are here re baba baba ba le komanu ataba esh kapante ru apane ko mani ko risa panante. Eruz kabilan peru anamananto marwa ziba baliata erua seze baliata. Lord, I'm here. Lord, I'm here. I'm the one that you have called. Oh, I am here. Lord, I am here. I am here. I'm the one that you have called, oh Lord, I am here. Come on, I'm here. I am here. I am here. I am here. I am here. I'm the sister that you have called, Lord, I am here. I am here. I am here. I'm the brother that you have called, oh Lord, I am here. I am here. You can make it better. You can increase the fire. You can increase the fire. I am here. I am here. I'm the brother that you have called. Lord, I am here. I am here. I am here. I'm the sister that you have called, oh Lord, I am here. <laughs> Holy Ghost, the sister is here. You can touch her. You can touch her. <laughs> Holy Ghost, the brother is here. You can touch him. You can touch him. Lord, I am here. I am here. I'm the brother that you have called, oh Lord, I am here. Where are the people? Where are the people? Yeah, get, 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 get
irreparable panuate. I will not let you go. 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 I will conceive. I will conceive. I will conceive. I will conceive. Something will be formed in me. Something will be formed in me. I will bet something. 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 I am an animal. I am an animal. I am an animal. In Jesus' name we are praying. All eyes closed. All eyes closed, please. All eyes closed. Something is happening in the spirit. I will soon leave this place and then my brother will come up. But I want to pray for some people. The Lord is speaking to you. He says it's time. It's time for you to stop touching on for you to stop touching on holy things. The word of the Lord is coming to you so strong. And you are feeling the arch inside of you. Something is telling you today. It's today. It's today. If you are that person, can you raise your hands? I want to pray with you. Something is telling you today. I'm seeing my beloved brother there. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. This is a massive harvest. There's a sister. There's another sister I saw. She's here now. She's not raising her hands. I'm seeing a brother raising his hands. Please come forward, my beloved brother. Please come forward. This is this is a massive harvest now. I told you there may just be two. There may just be three. But as, I'm, as the word of the Lord is coming forth, something in you is saying, you are the one. You are the one. Today. Today is your day. Today is your day. No more opportunity. If you are there, if you are there, can you join them? Can you join them? I'm going to pray with them now. As the word of the Lord is going forth, you are the, your spirit is being disturbed. Something is telling you the spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. Especially today. Today is your day. Oh my God, there is a sister there. There's a sister there. She's fighting it. She's fighting it. She's fighting it. Oh. Ha. Okay, I'm going to give one more minute for that sister. She's fighting it. Amanantofira Hara. And I'm looking at her in the spirit. I'm seeing her. I'm seeing her. But she's fighting it. Don't let the devil rob you of this opportunity. Once and for all. Once and for all. I am another racket or robber. The other. Those that are outside. Those that are outside. Can you pray? I say, Lord, I have come. I have come. Once and for all, receive me. Receive me. I'm the one, I'm the one that you have called. The Paracoma Nipeteraba, the Yah, the Ramba Nekomaliata, I'm the one that you have called, oh Lord, I am here. I am here, I am here. I'm the one that you have called, oh Lord, I am here. Lord Jesus, once and for all, your son has come. Let today be a turning point for him. In the name of Jesus, let today be a turning point for her. In the name of Jesus, let today be a turning point for her. In the name of Jesus, once and for all. In the name of Jesus, let today be a turning point for her. In the name of Jesus, once and for all, 
let today be a turning point. Let it be a turning point. In the name of Jesus. Once and for all, let today be a turning point. In the name of Jesus. E kabalato shabalaba. Once and for all, let today be a turning point. In the name of Jesus. Can we continue to pray? Can we continue to pray? You are blessed. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. In the name of Jesus. Those that are praying, you can continue to pray. Brother Paul, please, in the next three minutes, come up. I just want, I want prayers to roll out. Then I'll go and you come up. In the next three minutes, can we steer the waters again? Steer the waters. Steer the waters. River, river, overflow, fountain of love in my soul. River, river, overflow. Lord, I am here, I am here.